What's going on everybody? Today I've got an Amazon Echo Auto. This product, it's right here by the way. This product isn't actually available publicly at the moment, but about a year ago I signed up for the pre-order list and a week ago that came through. Truth being told, it's been invite only for so long that it almost feels like if they were to launch now, it would already be time for its replacement. In that respect, I'm wondering if invitees are just unwilling beta testers. Anyway, let's run through an unboxing, install, and try to live with it for a few days. The first thing we see is the Amazon Echo Vent Mount. This is not an accessory I purchased. It came separately but included with the product. I'm not sure if that's always going to be the case, but the instructions do make repeated reference to it, so if I were a betting man, and I am, I'd say it's here to stay. It feels okay, nothing too exciting. The unit is secured to the top via a magnet, it appears to be set at a fixed angle. It would be nice if this were adjustable, but say la vie. First out of the main unit's box is the dual 2 amp USB 12 volt power adapter. It's kind of nice they didn't super cheap out. Considering the Echo Auto only consumes 1 amp, they definitely could have gone lower end but didn't, so go Amazon. Here is the Echo Auto, still wrapped in its Jimmy hat. We'll take a closer look at this in a moment. Next, we've got some instructions, and finally, a micro USB power cord and a male to male 3.5 millimeter audio cord. Build quality is acceptable, but unremarkable. It's very light and save for a couple rubber feet is made from hard plastic all around. Compared to the third gen Echo Dot that at the moment only costs $5 more, the Echo Auto feels like a cheap novelty. Next we'll go ahead and set it up. I decided to get started in my kitchen because despite living in Seattle, Verizon is terrible at my house. That can you hear me now guy is full of shit. In any case, I thought my home Wi-Fi might make any troubleshooting a bit easier. Pairing the Echo Auto to one's phone is done via the Alexa app and should be just as easy as adding any other Alexa enabled device. But it's not. I was able to consistently detect the presence of the Echo Auto, but it took about 3 power cycles to actually establish a connection. Most of the time, I was greeted with an unable to connect message. It kind of reminded me of those times when you can see a Wi-Fi network, but it's playing jump rope with that 0 to 1 bar line and you're never able to actually join. Yeah, that's what pairing the Echo Auto felt like. Nevertheless, I was able to get it done eventually. So at that point, I headed outside and gave it a try in my Toyota. However, it seems the app and device had already forgotten one another. Such a shame, who would have thought they'd be having problems after such a rocky start? After repairing, one more time, I was able to hear Alexa's soothing voice over my truck speakers. Alexa, what time is it? The time is 7.36 p.m. Had to think about that, huh? Heading out for some errands, and I was anxious to give my new in-car virtual buddy the old college try. Out on the road, and this is what we got. Alexa, tell me a joke. Alexa, what time is it? Alexa, can you not hear me? Alexa, why are you not working? Alexa, are you a piece of shit? Alexa, did I waste $25 on you? 
Alexa, should I return you or sucker someone into buying you on eBay? Alexa, why don't all these people that are in line just use the other exit? So that's about it. A lot of talking on my part, not a lot of answering on hers. The next several days were to prove remarkably similar to the trip you just witnessed. In other words, me driving somewhere but going nowhere with Alexa. Final thoughts. I do not like the Amazon Echo Auto. And because it's so light, it's not even useful as a paperweight. As I said earlier, I'm not even sure this item will ever be released publicly. As we saw from initial setup and our failed driving experience, the software just doesn't feel like it's there yet. I never once got it to respond when on the road. Even after a couple resets, still nothing. Then there's the awkward installation. Clipping onto an air vent and then leaving a cord dangling about feels a bit old school. Fine for temporarily mounting a phone, but it looks sloppy for something that's meant to live in your car. But above all else, I was left wondering what the Amazon Echo would really be used for. Maybe if you happen to remember something that needs to go on a shopping list while you're driving, or are a big fan of Amazon Music, the Echo Auto is for you. But if you've got a smartphone, which you'll need to use this device in the first place, then you've already got Siri or Google Assistant in the car. And if you're short in the Bluetooth department, an FM adapter is easy to come by. And that's the route I'd go. I feel like the Amazon Echo Auto is a solution looking for a problem and then not solving it very well. But if you're dead set on having Alexa and her prying ears in the car with you, why not go for one of these? The Rove Viva by Anchor. It's an Alexa-enabled high-speed charger that gets you most of what the Echo Auto will without the annoying cords and it's available today. I'll place a link to these, in my opinion, more practical options below. Their Amazon affiliate links, for which the channel will earn a small commission, use of them is greatly appreciated. And that will about do her for today. If you thought I was totally off base, go ahead and let me know below or hit that thumbs down button. Okay, take care.